what the new hire tried to do? She could have injured herself. Although this video focuses on food safety, it is important to remember employee personal safety too. So make safe choices and ask for help if necessary. Well now it is Wednesday and we have a busy day of cooking. We'll look at safe practices associated with storing, cooking, and serving food. This includes proper food storage temperatures, first in, first out, thawing, cooking, serving, and cooling of foods. The best practice is to plan ahead and thaw foods in the refrigerator. Raw meats should be thawed on the bottom shelf at 41 degrees or lower. However, it is acceptable to thaw foods under running water at 70 degree Fahrenheit or below, but I call this the I forgot to pull it method. Remember, water is a precious commodity in Florida. Let's not waste it. Many foods in school food service are thawed as part of the cooking process. Be sure to keep foods in the freezer until you are ready to cook them. Most importantly, never thaw foods at room temperature. And if you thaw using a microwave, you must fully cook the product immediately and leftovers must be discarded. Hey Paula, how you doing? I'm still here making some spaghetti sauce. Let me tell you a story. Well, about three years ago, we had an employee and uh, she was making a spaghetti sauce. And she used the ground beef and basically the ground beef had turned brown. It was no longer pink. And she was thinking as long as the ground beef was uh, have turned away from pink, that it's done. So she put the ground beef in a spaghetti sauce and later on, we, the spaghetti sauce was served to the kids, and it's, uh, the kids became ill. And so from that day on, we never saw the, the employee again, but we are now required to make sure that we always keep a sanitized thermometer on us at all times to check the temp, to make sure the food is at, at the correct temp before serving it. Okay? All right. It is critical to cook foods to the required internal temperature. Check with your local school district to find out the specific temperatures used when cooking. When taking the temperature of cooked food, be sure to first sanitize your thermometer, stir food if applicable, then take at least two readings. If the product has not reached the desired temperature in a certain amount of time, keep cooking, but also check to make sure the equipment is working properly. When the final cooking temperature is reached, record the temperature on the cook's temperature log. Remember, if it's not documented, it's not done. Completed temperature logs prove the food has been handled safely in case questions arise. The faster food travels from cooking to serving, the less likely something can go wrong and less time for bacteria to grow. That's why batch cooking is so important. Plus, the quality of the product is improved when food is not held prior to serving. Remember the hot foods hot and cold foods cold rule? For food safety and food quality, we want to follow this rule. Cold foods should be held at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or lower, and do not stack containers above the cooling unit as the temperatures may rise to unsafe levels. Hot foods must be held at or above 140 degrees Fahrenheit. During serving, the temperature of the foods should be taken and recorded. 
The Florida Department of Education recommends recording the temperature on the food production record. If a product has to be held in a warmer prior to serving, be sure to take and record the temperature prior to serving. If the product is found below 140 degrees during holding or serving and has been held for less than four hours, it may be reheated to 165 degrees as a corrective action. Be sure to note this corrective action on your food production record. Serving utensils should be stored in the food during serving. And remember, if you replace the pan with a new pan of food, you need a new cleaned and sanitized serving utensil. If you are starving, it may not be a good idea to serve food to students. You may be tempted to taste test, and we never eat food from the serving line while serving. Plus, all of the rules of personal hygiene you learned in the first segment apply during serving food. Remember to wear hair restraint, preferably a hair net or cap, wash your hands properly, and wear a clean apron to serve food, not the one covered with spaghetti sauce that you just prepared. And if you use disposable aprons, put a fresh one on for serving your students. Looking professional goes a long way in school food service. A major reason for foodborne illness is improper cooling of foods. If you prepare today for service another day, or if you have hot leftovers you wish to cool and use later, it is extremely critical that you follow the rules of safe cooling. Let me say this loud and clear. Never cool foods at room temperature. And placing foods in front of a fan is not cooling. If food is left sitting out, this time must be added to the total cooling time. According to the Florida Department of Health, food must be cooled using one-stage cooling. In one-stage cooling, the temperature of the food must go from 140 degree Fahrenheit down to 41 degree Fahrenheit within four hours. And be sure to document the cooling temperatures on the cooling log. Once food has reached 41 degrees Fahrenheit, it may be placed in the cooler. To help you cool foods faster, you can use an ice bath, chill stick, blast chiller, or add ice as an ingredient. When using an ice bath, place foods into a small container like a two inch steam table pan instead of a four inch pan. Stirring the food frequently helps to release the heat and cool it faster. In addition, two inch pans used for cooling may be frozen prior to placing food in them to help speed the cooling process. Chill sticks work like an ice bath from the inside out. They can be prepared in one of two ways. When planning ahead, chill sticks may be filled with water and frozen, or if in a last minute pinch, filled with ice and used immediately. Another option for rapid cooling is to place food in a sheet pan or two inch pan and place on the top shelf of the cooler or on a baker's rack. A sheet pan may be placed on the top rack to prevent something from falling into the food or cover the food with a single layer of plastic wrap, never full because that would help hold in the heat. Also, the corners may be folded back to release the heat, then fully cover once the food has reached 41 degree Fahrenheit. All along the food production chain, you must make sure food is in the correct temperature range. Foods may be thawed in the refrigerator or under cold running water that is 70 degree Fahrenheit or below. Many frozen prepared foods can just go directly from the freezer to the oven. Cook foods to the required internal temperature and remember to take at least two readings when recording the temperature. Cold foods should be held and served at 41 degree Fahrenheit or lower, and hot foods should be held and served at 140 degree Fahrenheit or higher. And remember, all along the food production way, you need to record temperatures onto the temperature logs provided in your kitchen. Please take a few moments to answer the review questions. Question one. The best practice for thawing foods is to A. Thaw outside on a sunny Florida day B. Thaw using the warmer C. Thaw in the refrigerator or D. 
thaw in the dry storage at 70 degrees Fahrenheit? The correct answer is C, thaw in the refrigerator. Best practice is to thaw foods in the refrigerator at 41 degrees Fahrenheit. In a pinch, you may thaw foods under running water at 70 degrees Fahrenheit or below. And remember, never thaw foods at room temperature or floating in standing water. Question two, after taking the final internal cooking temperature using a clean, sanitized, and calibrated thermometer, you should A, cook for an additional 15 minutes, B, record the final internal cooking temperature on the appropriate log, C, tell your manager what is the final temperature of the food, or D, take a 15 minute break. The correct answer is B, record the final internal cooking temperature on the appropriate log. It is critical that final cooking temperatures be taken and recorded in the event that questions arise. Question three, when holding and serving food, hot foods must be held at blank and above, and cold foods must be held at blank or below. A, 170 and 71 degrees Fahrenheit. B, 160 and 61 degrees Fahrenheit. C, 150 and 51 degrees Fahrenheit. Or D, 140 and 41 degrees Fahrenheit. The correct answer is D, 140 and 41 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the hot foods hot, cold foods cold rule. The only way to make sure this rule is followed is to take and record serving line temperatures of food requiring time and temperature control. Question four, to cool foods faster, you can A, use an ice bath, B, turn the steam table line off one hour early, C, place food in front of a fan, or D, place food in the freezer. The correct answer is A, use an ice bath. Other methods for cooling food include chill stick, blast chiller, or placing food on a sheet pan or any two inch steam table pan and placing in the cooler. Just remember, never cool foods at room temperature. And lastly, question five, true or false? Chill sticks may be made out of plastic bottles. The correct answer is false. You cannot make your own chill stick. Only manufactured chill sticks made out of hard plastic may be used.